Hi guys, I'm Elise Galloway and I'm your instructor for the watercolor workshop that you'll be doing um, for the next couple of weeks. The um, video that you're about to watch is going to be from my live workshop in class. Um, and I went ahead and recorded it for so many of you that weren't able to make the actual class due to the snowstorm. So um, what I would like to start off with is showing you what we're going to be doing today in class. This is the color wheel. Okay, we have all the colors that we mixed out of three colors. And then we also made complementary mixes and we mixed a red, which is down here and we also mixed a black. So a lot of the time the recording does capture the painting process. I think for some of the complimentary and maybe even the black and red, I don't think I got the video footage recording um, myself painting those sections. But I'm going to leave my uh, classwork template in, as a photo over some of the spaces where I was just doing a little bit more of a discussion instead of having it just looking at a blank table. So this is what you'll see. Um, and then I have labeled the primaries and the secondaries and, um, and the tertiaries are just in between. They're labeled with a lowercase t. Um, I went ahead and put in the red up here, which is magenta plus yellow equals red. And then the um, yellow magenta blue for black. So, um, so I went ahead and just filled those out because I didn't have the video footage for them. Um, and I will take a photo of this and again, put that in those blank spaces for where I was just talking to the class instead of painting for you guys on camera. So let's cover your supply list real quick, okay? We're starting with our digital download for the template. You're gonna want some kind of watercolor paper for this class. You don't need 100% watercolor paper for this exercise. When we get into our next ex exercises where we're actually doing let me show you some of the work real quick, actually. This is this is my style, and these are gonna be some of the things that I will show you um, how to do in the class. I'll show you how to think like me, how to choose colors like me, um, and then stuff like that. So you'll be able to do something similar um, on your own. Okay, so template, watercolor paper. So, for this class, I used Canson. It's cheap. I don't like to use my good watercolor paper for the watercolor wheel because I do them every class and I think it's extremely, it, it's expensive. We don't need to use, we're not looking for um, effects with our watercolor when we're just doing the color, the color wheel. When we do the animals and the plants and other designs and stuff like that, you want the 100% watercolor paper. Um, and it will say 100% watercolor paper on the front page of your, the cover sheet of your, of your paper. Um, if it doesn't say 100% cotton, it's not. So you'll want 100% watercolor paper when we do our more um, elaborate exercises because we are going for the effects of the paper and watercolor ink together um, when we get into those exercises. Let's go ahead and cover the inks that you will be using. And if you don't want to use Ecolina's inks, that's okay. Just find something, find the colors on your palette that most closely resemble what these look like, okay? The ink, so magenta first. So this is magenta, it's number 337. And when you're looking at these, there's the front and the name is right there on the side, it's really tiny. So um, if you can't read that, the 337 number is um, magenta. And it's this pink color here. So if you can, let's see, can you see? maybe something like that. Can you see how pink and bright that is? It's super bright, super saturated, like pink, like magenta pink. So um, if you're using something like a primary red, a traditional red, it's not gonna work for you because your, your colors are gonna register a little bit higher on the color, a little warmer on the color wheel. 
um, and it'll start to create more muddy colors. So that's why the color you see is more important. Um, other names for magenta might be opera, rose, quinacridone. Um, those are a few other names that may be um, that th this may be labeled as. Um, for for Echolina, it's magenta, so straight and simple. But other brands may have different names for it. As long as it looks something like this in this color, you're good to go. Next is the blue. So it's cyan blue, sky blue, primary blue, um, I said cyan, cerulean. So those are a few different names for this color blue right here. You do not want ultramarine. Ultramarine will register a little bit more down here. It's a little warmer and it will, again, it'll make your colors a little muddy. So we're going for this, this blue here, cerulean or cyan, sky blue, something like that. That is what we want. And on here, it's called sky blue cyan number 578. That is their blue. And then lastly, we have yellow. It's lemon yellow and it's primary. Lemon yellow primary number 205. And that is up here. Don't use a cadmium or um, some yellows are a little bit too warm. A cadmium yellow is actually more over here. It leans a little warmer. It leans a little bit slightly, a little bit more orange. Um, and again, you're gonna come across muddy colors if you have something that is uh, too warm. So a little bit too much orange in it. So this is a lemon yellow, very pure um, primary yellow, lemon yellow. Those are the names it goes by. It's very simple for yellow. Those are important to get a good bright, vibrant mix. You're okay if you use a red, a traditional red and stuff like that, or ultramarine blue or whatever you have, your colors just won't look the same. It's not wrong, it's just different. So it's not a big, it's not, it's not a deal breaker by any means. Your colors will just be different. In traditional warm colors, you, you, your purples may not be as vibrant as what these can be. Anyway, let's move on. Okay. We talked about our paper. Um, the weight of the paper doesn't matter. So 140 versus 300 pound paper, it doesn't matter. Um, the paper uh, press doesn't matter if it's hot or cold press. Hot means it's smooth. Cold press means it might have a little bit of bumpy texture to it. It doesn't matter which one you use. Just 100% cotton. That is the that is the thing that makes a difference because of the way the water and color are absorbed into the paper. So papers that don't have 100% cotton on the label are mixed more with wood pulp and cellulose and then those just don't absorb water the same way. Moving on. Your brush. Mine is a number six silver, what is it? silver black velvet number six it doesn't matter as long as you have a medium-sized pointed round brush you'll be just fine and then this goes to a fine point but if you apply pressure it can also do a little bit more of a broad stroke that's what i like this for i've used the same brush for years and it's still going just fine um you're gonna want a stylus to transfer your um your templates to your watercolor paper. You're gonna want a kneadable eraser. You're gonna want a couple palettes. One or two is up to you. I like to have at least two because sometimes I get a little crazy with my color mixing and it's nice to have a little extra room. So these little things are perfect and um, Ecolina does not stain these. So other brands will. Um, let's see, if you have a permanent marker, you can use this uh, style or a broad brush tip style. Um, if you have a board to tape your watercolor to, that is helpful for maneuvering and keeping your paper to dry flat. So mine still warped a little bit because the tape came off, but it's not that big of a deal, especially for it being our watercolor wheel, it's okay. 
graphite or carbon transfer paper, it doesn't matter. If you don't have any, I have a ton in class and you can have a sheet. You can keep reusing the carbon or graphite paper. You can keep reusing it. So don't throw it away after one use. And I think that's about it. Um, let's go ahead and get started into the video. If you have questions, which you probably will, uh, that's perfectly fine. I'll answer your questions from the comment section below. So what we're gonna do to get started, if you have your color wheel template, um, and I will also make the template available, it actually, it's already available on my personal website. Hey, welcome. Um, so this is available for download for, for free. Um, so we're gonna start with our color wheel, and what we're gonna do is we're going to first take our watercolor paper and tape across all four sides of our paper um, to our, our board, whatever surface we're working on. And we're doing that because as we add water to our paper, it's gonna warp and doesn't matter what kind of paper you have, it's going to warp. Um, but because it's taped on all four sides, as it dries, it will dry flat again. So, and it helps prevent it from moving around um, and all that. So we'll go ahead and start with taping all four sides. And then what we're gonna do is once that's taped down, we're gonna take our template and on top and we're just gonna tape one side of it. And what it's gonna do is act like a hinge so we can lift it and see as we transfer our image, we're gonna be able to see what we've what we've done so far where we need to continue making marks. So for those of you who have done a color wheel, if you wanna try and do a geometric design, I'll have a couple of those available and you can do something like this. If you wanna do something more complex than our color wheel. Okay, and then once you already have yours hinged on one side, um, take your transfer paper, and I have some, you can have a sheet. No now problem. is it carbon? It is. I, I'm just curious, because with this, uh, this is graphite. Yeah, you Carb can use either one. I'll see if it works. Yeah, you can use either mm -hmm. one. Um, if you want to take one of these sheets, you're welcome to. You can keep using them. Um, so you take it, take it home with you. Um, and you can keep using it for your other. Is it face side down? Do the darkest side goes down, um, and so if you're not certain with with her paper, it's much lighter, and so it's harder to tell. Okay. Um, so you can just do a test scratch, okay. um, and then you'll be able to tell which side is the correct. When you start drawing on the back of your <laughs> template, you you know you've got the wrong side. Um, and if you need, I have styluses here. So you're welcome to use a pen, a pencil, a stylus, um, whatever you like. So if you like, do you have cups with you or do you need cups? I brought some containers. Okay. So we also have a couple up here if you need okay. them. Oh, cool. Yeah, I will get you set up. I'm gonna tape this down. I'll help you get set up. I didn't bring any source material like you were supposed oh, to. No, I have all of that for you. Okay. Thanks. I have everything. If you don't, if you're missing anything, I've got you covered. Oh, good. I even have ink. So if you want to try the um, the, it's actually pronounced Ecolina. And I will show them on our camera. These are actual. Watercolor inks. Where do you purchase them? I would recommend Jerry's or Blick online okay. or even Amazon because in stores they're a lot more expensive. So if you've already transferred, so go ahead. Did you do you guys have a um no, Needable eraser. Ideally, you're gonna do your transfer of your of your um, template onto your watercolor paper. I haven't done mine yet, but I'm gonna catch up to you guys. Um, transfer it over, and then use your kneaded eraser and put, pull it into a log shape and you're just gonna roll it over the surface to pick up 
excess graphite. And that keeps the graphite from mixing in with your inks um, or your watercolors, depending on what you're using. So you just roll that over your sketch once you've got your transfer down. Thank you. Okay, this is gonna be our transfer paper. You can use carbon or graphite, whatever you like. The darker side is gonna go face down. And if you're not sure, just do a test scratch and you'll be able to find out which side goes down. So you might not need to press too hard. Just be careful with your pressure. I think I'm pressing a little too firm because this stuff is, it transfers very quickly. So, um, do we use the same brushes for watercolor as we do our watercolor inks? Yes. They yeah, way. they'll be just fine. You can use synthetic or natural hair, whichever you like. Um, my brushes are pointed rounds. You don't have to use the same brush as me. I just like it because you get, um, this is my primary brush. Oh, okay. um, and I'll show that on camera as well. You guys will all have access to the video footage um, when, we're, when we're done. I'll, um, once I get it uploaded, um, I'll send you guys the link. Do you have a YouTube channel? I do, yeah, it, it's not. It's not great, but we're building it. Okay, but I do. What are you talking about? That was a little video. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm I'm building it. Um, and I'm I'm actually taking a workshop right now to learn how to do be a better job <laughs> with video. Um, but to answer your question, yes, I use a pointed round uh, size six. It doesn't matter what the size is, as long as it's like a a medium and uh, you can control it relatively well. This lets me get into like small detailed areas and also when I press it allows me to get a, a larger, more broad area. So that is my brush of choice. Um, and then just whatever whatever you're comfortable with. Some some students like to use a um, more round, round end or filbert or something like that. As you're doing your transfer, this is not a critical um, accuracy exercise, so don't worry if your lines are wavy or anything like that. It's okay. All right. Okay, there we go. I have my transfer done. I'm gonna do the kneaded eraser over my drawing. Now for this exercise, it's very straightforward, so you do not need to leave <clears throat> this leaf on top. When we do our more complicated paintings, I would recommend leaving the reference on top or stay, uh, leave it taped to your paper. You need an eraser, we're just gonna rip it, stretch it, get it warm um, and pliable. And then roll it into a log and go over the lines you've made. Um, and just as a, a quick introduction, I know we're kinda trying to move, I'm trying to move a little quick with this just so we can get started. Um, I'm Elise Galloway, uh, retired military and I've actually been painting for uh, quite a long time. I would say um, close to 20 years by now, I think, um, which kind of sounds a little weird to me. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I've been painting since I was a teenager and doing um, commissions and stuff for about that long. Um, I've been getting into a lot of realism. Um, and then as far as these watercolor inks and stuff go, I've been experimenting and playing with these for a couple of years now and I just, I found the Ecolina and I actually really like these. Um, Paul, I believe you're the one that said that you like them because of their immediacy and I, I just think that's um, actually a perfect way to describe them. You, you can water them down, you don't need to. 
um, when you do water them down, it's going to add a lot more transparency, you know, as you would expect. Um, they mix beautifully together. They um, will reactivate once they're dry on your paper. If you get them wet again, they will reactivate like normal watercolor would. The only thing I would suggest being careful or aware of when you're painting, if you have excess water on your brush after you've rinsed and you've, you've cleaned and rinsed your brush, you have a lot of water left on your brush. So what I recommend is grabbing a paper towel and keeping that in your hand. And then kind of wiping off excess water before you go back into your ink so you're not constantly wetting down the watercolor ink. So we're gonna, we're gonna dab off excess moisture um, before we start grabbing more color. If you're working with the inks, any any ink, don't dip directly into your bottle. <laughs> Speaking from experience, don't do that. Um, you will have a dirty brush or you won't be thinking about something and you're going to contaminate the entire bottle of ink. So be aware and be careful of that. Um, use a palette. These can be these can be difficult to open sometimes. If you need a hand, let me know. Let your neighbor know if they can open it. Um, and, then, and then squeeze out for this exercise. Be generous with your ink. We're gonna go ahead and do magenta. We're gonna do cyan blue or primary blue. And we're gonna do a, a yellow, and, and this one is lemon yellow. It leans slightly green or a cool tone yellow. If that doesn't make sense to you yet, um, it, it's okay. Um, but we're just gonna go for like a lemon yellow and we're gonna place them around our palette um, so that we have space to mix our colors as we go. So all we're gonna do, we're gonna create this entire color wheel um, from these three colors. And this one is a interesting paper so it came out a little weird but you'll see the actual examples there on my two sample sheets um, where they mix a lot better. I would recommend mixing on your palette first and do a test swatch. You can see my swatches um, or even a, on a scratch paper um, before you apply it to your color wheel. Do a test swatch. Make sure it's the color that you're wanting um, before you apply it. Um, and then one thing I would have you guys notice is as you're looking at the color wheel, and I'm, I'm trying to make sure the camera can see all this as well. Um, as we are looking at the color wheel, if you kind of blur your eyes a little bit, we don't want to see a noticeable jump between any of the neighboring colors. They should be a very gradual blend all the way around the color wheel. Um, some colors are stronger or more pigmented than others, such as blue. It will take over a mixture really fast. So when you're going into your greens and you're mixing the blue and yellow, your blue to yellow ratio, you're gonna use a lot less blue. So just be, be aware of that. Same with the, the magenta. Magenta is extremely, um, controlling when it comes to that color mixture um, uh, ratio. So just be aware of that when you're mixing your colors, um, how much of each. If you've gone too far in one direction and you're not going to really be able to bring it back to where you really want to, just make a new little puddle of, of ink and that's okay. You can still use that darker color that you might have gone a little too far with you can use that in a different section. Um, so just kind of think of that. When we're starting, we're gonna start with our primaries and we're gonna go ahead and block our primaries in first. Once we have all of our primaries in, then we're gonna go to our secondaries. And our secondaries, I will show you when we get there. Our primaries are just these three colors. We're gonna start with those. You should have your um, yellow, I have red on here, or R. Um, you can use M for magenta because that's the actual color we're using. Um, it's up to you. 
I used R because that's just what most people know. Um, however you want to label that is completely up to you. Um, I tend to refer to them interchangeably when we're talking about it. If, I, if you're confused, just let me know and I will specify. <laughs> um, so we're going to start with yellow at the top and we're going to go to our magenta um, wedge and then we're going to go to our uh, blue wedge over here. So let's start with those three, filling those in with pure pigment straight from your palette. All right. Do we have Do we have any other questions? Did you Did you want to use the um, Ecolina colors, or do you want to use what you have? You know, I think I'm going to try and get you know use these up. And okay. Then, yeah. yeah perfectly so. fine. As I was letting her know, just use whatever colors closest resemble the magenta, the lemon yellow, and the cyan blue. Perfect. So whatever looks closest to that, that's what we'll use. Okay, so here, and forgive my uh, <laughs> I mixed color on here by accident. I, I had fuchsia on there instead of magenta. But um, this is something like what you should see. Um, this is where you'll start. You'll have all your primaries blocked in. Um, and then once you have your primaries done, we're gonna focus on our secondaries. And the secondaries are the ones in the middle between the primary. So your green, orange, and violet. And all you're gonna do is take the two primaries that straddle it, mix those together to make your secondary. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So yellow and magenta will make orange, blue and magenta will make violet, and then your yellow and blue will make green. What blue do you have there? Is this is cyan. Cyan and blue, and so this one here looks like a the, the names of your paints don't matter. Every um, brand of paint tries to come up with their own name, their own label. So it's what you see on the paper that's most important. Um, this is a very cool tone blue, um, and that's what we're going for with this exercise. It's called Cyan. Hi, welcome. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Cyan, sky blue, primary blue, um, anything along those those lines. Um, I'm trying to think, there's there's a couple other names for it, but um, but those are the main ones. Magenta could also be called um, rose. I think it's sometimes called rose. Um, quinacridone. Um, there's there's oh opera. Opera is another color for the pink that we're using. Um, there's several different colors for that. Cerulean is the blue. That's another, that's another name for that one. The yellow is the easiest with being lemon yellow or primary yellow. So that's, that one's pretty simple usually. Um, but it's just what you see that matters. It's not the name because the names can be very confusing or misleading. Okay, and remember when you're doing your secondary colors, it's not necessarily a 50-50 um, mixing ratio. You're not gonna use two drops of 
yellow to two drops of magenta is gonna because because they stain differently. So um, so just eyeball it. Do a test swatch in your white space on the edge to test the color um, and see if that looks pretty neutral. And when I say neutral, your color shouldn't lean too close to either of the primaries. Your, your orange is going to be um, neither too yellow nor too magenta. It's going to be very middle ground, very neutral. That's what we're looking for. When you're painting your little wedges, if you feel like my color does not look solid, it doesn't look as vibrant, it's not as dark as yours, or whatever, I do a couple layers of paint oh, okay. on all of my wedges or my, my little okay. uh, pie pieces. So um, I, I load on the pigment. Um, so if yours is looking splotchy or something like that, it's okay. Let it dry or add a little bit more paint to it to where it can be a little bit darker and more saturated. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> if you're not using enough paint, it will look a little splotchy or something like that. That's okay. Just add another layer. It's perfectly fine. My yellow is looking a little washed out right now. Once I've finished most things, I'll come back and I'll add another layer of yellow on top of this to, to bump up the saturation. Yeah, Pretty, so. you created a lot of really cool stuff last class. I really yeah. like seeing your work. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's one thing with this class is I'll show you the techniques, um, but really it, it is up to you what you want to work on. Um, I'll, I'll have suggested um, projects in the class and something that I'll work on and, and kind of walk you through, but if you're feeling like I don't really like succulent plants I don't like reindeer or you know whatever um, then then you don't have to do that one you can you can do your own um, your own exercise or whatever you're feeling and that's perfectly fine even if you um, Kathy sometimes brings her own um, projects that she's already got in you know going on and that's cool whatever whatever you're feeling um, I'm gonna talk about my techniques and how I paint and how I choose the colors that I do and how I paint the way I paint um, with my style um, you know and, and it's just a tool for you something to kind of refer to um, if you want to try on your own or expand you know your your toolbox then that's that's what this is for um, <clears throat> but don't feel obligated if you hate plants, you don't you don't have to paint a plant. <laughs> it's okay. Um, you know, if you hate painting animals, you know that's okay. Um, so I, I try to give you guys flexibility. I try to give you guys tools um, and a general practice overall, or or, or uh, mindset, I guess, is how I go about painting like that. So for those on camera, we're doing our tertiary mixes now. Um, it's going to be the neighboring colors that come together to make your ter tertiary mixes. And as an example, when you blur your eyes, um, you shouldn't see a noticeable jump between all of your colors. It should be very gradual as you go around the color wheel. If it's too much of a jump, you can try testing out like I've done here. Um, you can see my color mixing swatches uh, and adjust your mixture before you apply it to your wedge. 
So make sure when you so make sure you get the right color so that they blur in a nice transition, then apply to your color wheel. So that's what we're going to work on now. So um, I've taught this class for the last year. Um, I'm so sad to say this is going to be my last workshop. Um, yeah, this is this after this workshop. We ha we have a few more classes left, but um, yeah, this will be my last because I'll be um, I'll be teaching and I'll be building actually my. Um, my online stuff. So online and in person, I'll be teaching watercolor, soft pastel, um, my my other stuff, my, my own wow. platform. So um, I'm excited online. about it. What's that? Will it be online? I'll have it? I'll have both um, online and also in person. I have a studio in my house. Um, and right now I'm comfortable fitting about six students. I wouldn't go much more than that at the moment. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually very excited about it. I've been, came for, um, where do you live? You watercolor classes. All right, wherever you guys are at, I'm gonna go ahead and have you start with me on our complementaries. Okay, so we're gonna start with our complementary mixes. So I'm gonna do a swatch of yellow, and then I'm gonna put next to it, or near it, I'm gonna do a swatch of uh, violet. And I actually ran out of mine, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a little bit more. As you're going between colors, make sure you're rinsing cleaning your brush, get out of the excess moisture, and then go into your new color. Test, do a test swatch. I think that is not quite blue enough. I have a little bit of blue here, I'm gonna try that. That's okay, that, that's close enough. So I'm gonna do my violet next to my yellow. Clean out my brush again. Rinse my brush, get rid of the excess. And I'm going to bring those together and that is a little bit too light. So I'm going to bring in a little bit more color. <clears throat> Let's see, bring a little bit of that in, bring in a little bit more yellow and you, your color shouldn't be too yellow, it shouldn't be too violet, it should be a pretty neutral middle ground as we bring these two together. We're blending. Maybe a little bit more yellow. And this is going to be your complementary mix. might be a little challenging to get the right balance there, but <clears throat> just play with it a little bit. You'll you'll figure out the mixture that you need to get a pretty neutral complementary. 
Okay, and if you want to label those, go ahead and do so. This is going to be our yellow and our violet. Okay, and we're going to move on to the next primary color. I'm going to choose magenta. So we're going to have magenta, and its complementary is green. So I put down a swatch of magenta. I have a little bit of green left. I'm going to actually, I need to make a little bit more green. Let's see. Blue. And pick up some of that yellow. A little bit more. Test that out. How does that look? Too blue. A little bit more yellow. Test that out. That's pretty close. Okay. So magenta and green are our complementaries. I'm going to just wipe that off a little bit. Bring those together. Get a little bit more magenta. You better go tra tra track her down. Oh my goodness. I already talked to her. Did you? <laughs> you already says, talked to her? All put away. <laughs> oh no, they're not. No, I'll take the key. I, I will fix that problem. Okay, and here is our magenta and green. <clears throat> A pretty balanced mixture here. Again, it looks very muddy. That's what we want. You want it. it it's. It's not going to be a vibrant color. You're using opposite from the color wheel. They're going to make mud. This is um, this is an edge uh, a lesson in um, complementaries and also how to troubleshoot. If you have colors that are making mud and you don't want mud, this is this is something to consider. Um, are you using colors that are too far apart from each other? If they're too far apart on the color wheel, they don't they don't play very well. They need to be closer neighbors and they'll work really well together when they're neighbors. And when I say neighbors, I mean anything from a complementary to or I'm sorry, a primary to a primary. Um, and within that group, you know, those will play really well together. Um, once you go outside the boundaries of a primary color, um, range, then they don't play well together. Okay. Our last one is blue and orange. I have some orange here. Let's see. Yep, that's fine. So I'm going to bring those together. Those together. I'm gonna go ahead and label these. And um, I didn't really specify this before, but it's yellow, yellow, orange, orange, red, orange, red or magenta, however you wanna label that. Red, violet, Violet, blue, violet, blue, blue, green, green, yellow, green. That's what the, that's what those little labels mean going around the color wheel. Because I don't think I specified that before. We're gonna do yellow plus magenta plus blue. What we're gonna do is take all three of our primaries, the all three of the colors we're using, okay, um, yellow, blue, and magenta. Take all three of these and we're gonna mix them together and we're gonna put them in our, in our swatch. Um, when you're making your swatch, make sure it doesn't look too blue, it doesn't look too magenta, it doesn't look too yellow or something along those lines. If you see yours, I think mine was looking, mine looks a little too blue at the moment. So if mine's too blue or blue violet, I'm gonna mix the opposite. So I'm gonna need a little bit more magenta, a little bit more yellow to make it more neutral. Um, 
mix them in one cell together oh, and oh, then oh, see what, okay. what is it make. Okay, oh, that's right. So okay. Um, once you've made your very neutral um, mix of the three primaries, we're going to go ahead and make a true red. And we're going to make our red with magenta and yellow. Um, and you, you are, you're already familiar with how to get to it, with how to, you, you're familiar with your ratios, more or less, by now, or how to adjust your ratios, right, mm -hmm. kind of. So we're going to go ahead and make a red, um, as, as much of a, a punchy red as you can, using your magenta and your yellow. And this is one of the succulents that is in class. Oh, okay. Um, so we'll have those. You bring in a succulent or you just... No. Oh, no, no, no. Every... This is not a drawing class. Okay. Okay. So this is... You, 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 you have to trace it. Now. Yeah. You'll trace just like we did our uh, color wheel today. Oh, okay. You don't have to learn how to draw. Oh, okay. I promise. It's okay. Um, if you want to freehand, I have students sometimes that want to freehand, go for it. You, by all means. Um, I do this for expediency and... Because, yeah, you want to get to the color. Yeah, it, there's Thank no need to... Um, I don't want people to be stressed if their drawing isn't quite right. So... Um, it takes take me a long time to draw something. It does. Yes. It, it really does. So um, I want to just kind of help um, students along with that. I don't want that to be a stressor. Um, Oh, before we go too far, did you guys make your the three primaries? What did you come up with? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I came up with that. Uh, came up with several colors. Yeah. Um, yes, perfect. We did it. Um, I'm going to redo this at home. Okay. I don't like, I don't, I don't have it's, it's perfectly fine. This is, um, this is just an exercise. It's okay. to get familiar to stretch your color mixing. Mm -hmm. Some of this, some of you guys are like, I've done this before, or I've already, you know, this is very boring. And I'm, I apologize if, it's, if it sounds boring, but these are the color mixing. I want to arm you with knowledge on how to get to some of these colors. Some people um, don't realize it's yellow and blue that make green, or, or you know, they don't, they don't really realize they can make a yellow green and stuff like that. So these are just um, trying to stretch you a little bit and help you um, to explore your palette. What I like to encourage with my um, my students that have already done these exercises is for them to explore some of the either a warm palette like what you're doing or explore your complementary mixes. So last time we mixed them 50-50 pretty well and we came out and we saw what that what blobs those made um, but I would encourage you to try some of the more nuanced colors in there, more earth tone colors with your complimentary mixes. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll have a lot more videos, hopefully better quality videos <laughs> as we move forward. Thanks guys so much.